Rolly Lola Mandela was born into the Mariba clown in the village of Mbezu in Eastern Cape on 18 July 1918. His mother was Nawapi Nosekeni, the third wife of his father. And his father was Kosi Fankayiswa Ganla Mandela, principal counselor to the acting king of the Tembo people, John Jitaba Daleyebo, the subgroup of the Hosa people, who make up South Africa's second largest cultural group. In 1930, when Mandela was 12 years old, his father died and the young Mandela became a ward of Janjitaba at the great place of Henke Swani. Hearing the Ede story of his ancestor Velo during the war of resistance, he dreamed also of making his own contribution to the freedom struggle of his people. Mandela was originally known as Rolilola Dalembunga Mandela. He attended primary school in Hunu, where his teacher, Miss Dingan, gave him the name Nelson in accordance with the custom of giving all school children Christian names. When I went to school, the lady teacher, Miss Dingane, asked, What is your name? I told him my African name, Khodisha. She says, No, I don't want that one. You must have a Christian name. So I say, no, I don't have one. She says, you are from today, you are going to be Nelson. That's how I earned the name Nelson, not given by my parents. He completed his junior certificate at Clarkbury Boarding Institute and went on to head town, a Wesleyan secondary school of some repute where he matriculated. Mandela attended the country-only university for black people, the University of Fort Hare. There, he became an activist and was expelled for protesting the student government's lack of power. He returned home to his small village on the Eastern Cape, only to find that his family wanted him to enter an arranged marriage to punish him for leaving school. So he fled north to Soweto, a city in Johannesburg. South Africa's largest black city in 1941. A few months into his stay in Johannesburg, Mandela was introduced to a young estate agent named Walter Sisulu, who immediately took him under his wing. Sisulu had joined the African National Congress ANC in 1940 and would prove to have a great influence over Mandela as a lifelong friend political mentor and closest political confidant. Furthermore, Sisulu found Mandela a wise firm of Anthony who were prepared to give him a job and register him as an article clerk, an exceedingly rare offer in segregated South Africa. While working at the firm, Mandela enrolled as part-time law student at Witwatersrand University and began to study law, starting the nation's first black law firm. In 1944, he married Walter Sisulu's cousin, Evelyn Mass, a nurse. They had two sons, Madiba Tembekil, Tembi, and Makado, and two daughters, both called Makasewi, the first of whom died in infancy. Mandela and his wife later divorced, 1958. He joined the African National Congress a group that agitated for the civil right of black South Africa. The segregation that was already rampant in South Africa became state law when its ruling party formally adopted apartheid or apartness. This policy required black South Africa to carry identification with them at all times, which they needed to enter areas designated for white. They were forced to live in all black zones and forbidden from entering into interracial relationship. Black people were even removed from the voters' role and eventually fully disenfranchised. At first, Mandela and his fellow member of the ANC used non-violent tactics like strike and demonstrations to protest apartheid. In 1952, Mandela helped escalate the struggle as a leader of the defense campaign, which encouraged black participants to actively violate law. More than 8,000 people, including Mandela, were jailed for violating curfews, refusing to carry identification passes, and other offenses. 
After serving his sentence, Mandela continued to lead protests against the government and in 1956, he along with 155 others was tried for treason. During the trial, Mandela married a social worker, Wendy Madiki Zella. They had two daughters, Zenani and Zizizwa. The couple divorced in 1996. He was acquitted in 1961 and lived in Hayden for 17 months after the trial. He only started studying again through the University of London after his imprisonment in 1962, but also did not complete that degree. Over time, Mandela came to believe that armed resistance was the only way to end apartheid. In 1962, he briefly left the country to receive military training and gain support for the cause but was arrested and convicted soon after his return for leaving the country without a permit. Then while he was in prison, police discovered documents related to Mandela's plan for guerrilla warfare. They charged him and his allies with sabotage. Mandela and the other defenders in the ensuring revenue trial knew they were sure to be convicted and executed so they turned their trial into a statement publicizing the anti-apartheid struggle and challenging the legal system that oppresses black south africans when it was mandela turn to speak for the defense it delivered a four hour long speech it is an idea for which i hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. On 11 June 1964, Mandela and seven other accused were convicted and the next day were sentenced to life imprisonment. Goldberg, one of the accused, was sent to Pretoria prison because he was white, while the others went to Robin Highland. Mandela was allowed only one 30-minute visit with a single person every year and could send and receive two letters a year. Confined in astral condition, he worked in a limestone quarry and over time earned the respect of his captors and fellow prisoners. He was given chances to leave prison in exchange for ensuring the ANC would give up violence, but he refused. Mandela Mother died in 1968 and his eldest son, Tembi, in 1969, he was not allowed to attend their funeral. Over his 27 years of imprisonment, Mandela became the world's best known political prisoner. His walls were bound in South Africa, but he was already the country's most famous man. His supporters agitated for his release, and news of his imprisonment galvanized anti apartheid activists all over the world. In the 1960s, some members of the United Nations began to call for sanctions against South Africa. Calls that grew louder in the decades that followed. Eventually, South Africa became an international pariah. On 12th August 1988, he was taken to hospital where he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. After more than three months in two hospitals, he was transferred on 7th December 1988 to a house at Victor Vistal Prison near Pearl where he spent his last 14 months of imprisonment. In 1989, while in the last months of his imprisonment, he obtained Bachelor of Law through the University of South Africa. He graduated in absentia at a ceremony in Cape Town. On 2nd February 1990, in response to international pressure and the threat of civil war, South African new president F.W. de Klerk pledged to unban ANC and all other prescribed political parties and release Mandela and all other political prisoners on Sunday 11th February 1990 after 27 years in prison. Apartheid did not immediately end with Mandela release 
now is 71. Mandela immersed himself in official talk to end white minority rule and in 1991 was elected ANC president to replace his oil friend Oliver Tembo. In 1993, he and President F.W. de Klerk jointly won the Nobel Peace Prize and on 27 April 1994 he voted for the first time in his life where the ANC, now a political party, won more than 62% of the popular vote in a peaceful democratic election. On 9 May, Mandela was elected unopposed as president of South Africa in the first session of the Constituent Assembly. His presidential inauguration took place the next day at the Union Building in Pretoria and was attended by the largest gathering of international leaders in South Africa history. On his 80th birthday in 1998, he married Grace Michelle, his third wife. True to his promise, Mandela stepped down in 1999 after one term as president. He was succeeded by Thabo Mbeki. He continued to work with the Nelson Mandela Children Fund he set up in 1995 and established the Nelson Mandela Foundation and the Mandela Road Foundation. In 2003, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. In November, a concert was held at Greenpoint Stadium to raise funds for the Nelson Mandela Foundation, the Nelson Mandela Children Fund and the Global AIDS Organization. The concept was called Nelson Mandela 46664 Global Aid Initiative as 466-64 was Nelson Mandela's prison number during his 27 years of incarceration. This concert would be the first of six international concerts of the same name that took place between 2003 and 2008. In April 2007, his grandson Mandela Mandela was installed as head of the Mbezo Traditional Council at the ceremony at the Mbezo Great Place. Nelson Mandela never wavered in his devotion to democracy, equality, and learning. Despite terrible provocation, he never answered racism with racism. His life is an inspiration to all who are oppressed and deprived, and to all who are opposed to oppression and deprivation. Throughout 2012 and 2013, rumors abounded about Nelson Mandela's failing health until the Nation World's Fair were confirmed on 5th December 2013. Mandela had passed away in Hockton Estate in Johannesburg.